students, this is for the material for a third round, going to second round for your first and second blue stripes. The whole sparring strategy is about double kicking. So let's go ahead and get started and have some fun. You notice I put up two heavy bags. The reason I did that is I'm going to do everything with my right leg to make it simple for you to see, but remember to work both legs, okay? And the reason I did that is so one side, I'll do the heavy bag this way and then I'll turn around so you can see the other side and I'm hoping that'll just kind of help you get a better perspective of the double kicks. So let me give you a couple of important little notes about double kicks. First of all, one of the biggest things is we're looking for you to lean forward into the kicks, not backwards. One of the biggest problems everybody has when they try to do a double kick is they lean backwards as they say you're doing the double roundhouse kick. And you learn that at Orange Belt, but we'll put a little twist on the double kick when you get to this level, okay? So when you are doing a double kick, commonly people are here leaning backwards and they're almost falling backwards as they do it. And remember, we need to be leaning forward into the kicks, and that's important. Also, when we grade this off, you'll notice that everything I do is a front leg kick. That's how we require it, and that's how we want you to do it as you're learning. Now, as you continue your training, naturally, you can always add double kicks to rear leg kicks. You can also even do spinning back and add double kicks, okay? Once you understand double kicks, you can do triple kicks. So it's really just a matter of understanding these strategies so that you are able to put this together. But the requirement that we have is six double kicks. So once you understand these six double kicks, trust me, you can understand any other variation of this, okay? So these are the double kicks. So the first thing is you want to make sure you're falling forward, not backwards. That's how I like to say it, or leaning forward, okay? And so what I mean is when you're doing your double round round kick, I want to be here going forward into the technique for two reasons. One is a kick is not effective if you're falling backwards. But second of all, if you're leaning forward, then you should be able to drop with the hand technique. And that's the other thing is always be ready to use your hand techniques. It's a, it's a common mistake. A lot of people will do the double kick and then they're not ready with their hands. Make sure that you're always dropping and ready with your hands. Sometimes in class we'll even have you practice it. The, set, the next thing is when you're getting graded off, we want you to do all of them in with a replacement step. Now you could do standing double kicks like defensive kicks and that's fine. But for the purpose of grading it off, we want to see everything with the replacement step. You also will find that once you get it pretty good with the double kicks or different kinds of kicking, you can use a slip kick, you can use the cross steps, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we want it graded off using the replacement step because it's kind of the easy, most proficient way of learning these, as well as we want you to really develop the skill of the replacement step. It's a great movement for sport fighting. And since a lot of double kicks are about sport fighting, that's um, what we're focused on here. Um, another thing about um, the double kicks is the hip position is the same for all three of these kicks. When you're doing a roundhouse, a side kick, and a hook heel kick, one of the biggest problems we have is sometimes people are still trying to keep their hip forward as they're trying to do a roundhouse kick. And that's not a true roundhouse kick. Um, that we call it a side up kick, some people call it a hook kick, some people call it a roundhouse kick. It's not wrong, it's just not the kind of kick we want you to train right now. Now as you get closer to black belt, if you want to start adding that kick in your vocabulary, it is a good kick where it gives you more power up close. That's why a lot of kickboxers like it. But for the purpose of our training for sport point fighting, you really want to learn to develop the proper roundhouse kick. And that's where you're turning your hips away. And then you'll notice that by doing double kicks this way, you do not have to change your hip position. I can put my hip in this position and I can do a side kick, I can do a roundhouse kick, and I can do the hook heel kick without having to change the hips. If you're here trying to do a roundhouse kick this way and trying to do a side kick with your hip this way, you're, you're going to create a lot of balance issues and as well as speed issues. So you really want to learn how to get that hip in position and keep it there. And once you do that, you'll have no trouble. Now sometimes people have another problem. They don't understand how to get there because most of the time when we fight, we have our hips forward, obviously, because if you're going to punch or strike or move in, you want your hips forward. And so as you're sparring, we, you know, beginners, we tell them to turn sideways, but most people begin to learn that if I really want to get in there, I've got to put that rear knee down just a little bit, use it like a spring, and I'm leaning in just a little bit to get those hands going. So then what happens is people try to do a roundhouse kick with their hips forward, and that's why they have so much trouble. And what you've just got to learn to do is as I'm sliding up, the foot turns around. 
So even though my hips are forward, as soon as I'm kicking, I'm turning those hips over so that I can do my good roundhouse kick. See, I'm here with my hips forward, and then as I go to kick, no matter which of those kicks it is, I'm here turning the hip in the motion. So learn to do that as part of your training because yes, most of the time you're gonna fight with your hips forward, but when you're getting these kicks in, you gotta learn to turn those hips and you'll learn to turn them back forward with some time. The hips do need to be moving, but at the same time, you, if you can do these double and triple kicks without having to switch your hip around, it's gonna be a lot faster, a lot more effective. You're gonna get better reach and other things. All right, the other thing is why do double kicks? One of the primary purposes of a double kick is it's almost like a fake. The best way to fake someone is to hit them with a real technique. So if I'm here and I'm sparring this person and I do a roundhouse kick, boom, and I hit him in the groin or the lower body, when I go do another roundhouse kick, he is going to react to it or he most likely will react to it. And so that's where the double kick comes in. You hit them with a good technique. It doesn't matter what the technique is, but if I come in and hit them with that good roundhouse kick, then the next time I come in, he starts to react or cover, you know, you know, trying to move away. And then you just simply do your double roundhouse. You just simply tap twice, okay? And then what will happen is they'll drop their hands or you see someone who reacts that way. As soon as they're dropping their hands or putting their hands up, you just go to the area that's open, okay? On the reverse side, if you kick someone in the face, well then if they start bringing their hands up and they see that kick coming in, then you uh, do your second kick right to the body, okay? So it comes almost like a fake for that first kick. But always make sure you're training to hit with it, okay? Make sure that every time you do double kicks, you're always hitting with both kicks, all right? So let's give that a try. Now, I mentioned that you've already learned a double roundhouse kick at Orange Belt. So what's the difference here with the double roundhouse kick? Here we want you to start learning to practice hitting different heights. At Orange Bell, all we cared about is that you could just do the kick. But at this level, we want you to try going either low, high, or high, low. You'll find it's easier to go low, high, and that's how I'll illustrate it. But if you get this figured out, then you should be able to go high, low, okay? So what you do is you were just working the replacement step, and then I just do a double roundhouse kick. Okay, and try to learn to chamber that leg. Sometimes, and, and remember what I mentioned in the kicking video, those of you who watch that, sometimes it's a good idea to go back and work it slow, okay? So I'm here going. In there. And if you learn to do it slow, then you're making sure you're doing it mechanically correct. And you do that enough times, then you try to speed it up, and then you're here and you got your double roundhouse, okay? So that's all the motion is. I'm just here, double round. Okay, so let me turn around so you can see this. Ready, double round. Okay, one more time. I'm just here, double round. Or I mentioned you could also go high, low. All right, so that's something else that you can do. The next double kick is a side kick roundhouse, okay? So I'm coming in and I'm just hitting with the side kick and then I pull the knee back and do a roundhouse kick. So the motion is side round. And by the way, the roundhouse kick, you could then make it high or low or whatever you need. But remember, all double kicks, the lowest you can kick is the groin level. So if you're kicking lower than the hips or kick lower than the groin, you're doing an illegal kick in sport fighting. And so you need to keep that in mind. Sometimes I'll have people who can kick high, but then their first kick is like kicking someone in the knee and make sure you're never going below the hip, okay, in your training, because you wanna make sure that you always have those kicks high enough, because otherwise you're gonna give the other person the point, right, for an illegal technique. So again, I'm here and I go side round, okay? So I'm coming in, just doing a side kick, and then a roundhouse kick, all right? So one more time, I'm here, side round. Again, side round, all right, doing it again. Side round. And by the way, if you don't have a target that you can hit, then again, if this is a corner in a house, or this is a, a post or something, or you know, whatever, a bed post or something, then just don't hit it, but still do the motion. Okay? You're just here practicing the motion. Try to do a good side and a good roundhouse kick. Now the next one is round. Sidekick. This one's a little more difficult because 
You have to be closer to hit a good tar or hit a target with a roundhouse kick. So then you gotta pull your leg back a little more to do that side kick. The main purpose of this particular counter or kick would be against someone who's really good at what's called a fade and go. At second round, you're gonna learn a strategy where you learn to fade away and then you come in. That's a great counter to a lot of kicks. And the double kick ends up actually being the counter to the fade and go. So when I start doing my roundhouse kick and I see the person fade away, I pull my leg back and as soon as they're coming in, you just hit them with that side kick. So in a bag, where the bag's not moving back and coming forward, it's a little awkward. But with a person, if they move back a little bit, boom, that side kick might work just perfectly. All right, so you're just here going roundhouse, side kick, okay? So your motion is roundhouse, side kick. All right, one more time. Roundhouse, side kick, okay? So here we are. Roundhouse, side kick. Roundhouse, side kick, okay? One more time, ready? Roundhouse, side kick. All right, so that's all the motion is. Now the next three combinations all include a hook heel kick. So the first two, again, is a hook heel kick. And the hook heel kick, sometimes, especially the hook heel roundhouse, a lot of people, when they see the hook heel kick coming in, they try to cover their head and they lean forward. Well, that makes hitting them with a roundhouse kick real easy when you bring it back. The other thing is, if you're doing a hook heel kick and someone fades away, starts moving in, then the hook heel side kick works real good because it'll run right into that side kick. All right, so let's go ahead and do, demonstrate that. So you're here and you go hook heel, roundhouse kick. All right, so you're here heel roundhouse kick and notice again how I always like to train that hook heel kick where I'm hitting with the heel just barely touching now remember in sport fighting we hit with the bottom of the foot and we just slap them but whenever I train I always train hitting with the back of the heel so let's go ahead and go through that so I'm here and I go hook heel round if you listen carefully you'll even hear my hook heel just lightly touch the back Okay, see how I just lightly touch the bag, but I'm not going so far that I can't carry it through. Alright, so hook heel roundhouse. Alright, so doing it here. Alright. Okay, hook heel roundhouse. Then the next one is hook heel side. So you're here. So you do your hook heel kick and then a side kick. Hook heel side. Alright, let's try it on the other. So you see it from another perspective. Alright, and then the last one is a round hook heel kick. This is definitely the most awkward one for someone who's learning this. And in fighting, most of the time what you do is you actually hit someone with the roundhouse kick. Then when you start lifting your knee for the roundhouse kick and you see them start to react, then you just take your leg around and hit them on the back of the head. So a lot of times when you're actually hitting someone with this combination, you don't have to hit with that first roundhouse kick. But again, like I said a little bit ago, always trim hitting because you might need to, all right? Or if the opening is there, hit it, okay? So we never want to pull something short when there was an opportunity there, okay? So make sure you always practice hitting. But the motion is I come in and I go roundhouse, and then you pull the leg back, hook heel, all right? And notice again, I try to keep the knee pretty straight, but it does have to move around just a little, okay? So you go roundhouse, hook heel, all right? So I'm here. Roundhouse. Whoa, that wasn't too good, was it? All right, one more time. Roundhouse, hook heel. Okay, so just show it from a different perspective. Roundhouse and hook heel. One more time. Roundhouse, hook heel. And that is the combination or hook heel. Those are the double kicks that you have to know for both of your blue stripes for third round going to second. So your first blue stripe is the first three kicks, and then the second blue stripe is the next three kicks. So keep practicing. I do want to give a little note about hook heel kicks, just for your information. To spar with hook heel kicks, there's really three ways of hitting. 
a target. One is with the heel. In real life, if you were trying to hit somebody hard, just like I was showing you with the training, how I take and I always practice hitting with that heel. And if you listen carefully again, you can hear that I just touch with that heel, okay? So in a real street situation though, if you were using this in the street again, I always discourage head level kicks, but as a concept, if you were really trying to hit somebody hard, or maybe you were in kickboxing or something, where you want to, you know, really be able to hit hard. Now in sport fighting, we can't do this, but if you were trying to hit someone hard, then you take that heel of the foot, boom, and you hit with that heel. And you want to be able to train it where you can really put a lot of force into it. But when we do actual sport fighting, if you want to maintain that motion, but not hit somebody too hard, and by reaching out with your foot like this, you gain another four, five, six inches. So now you can increase your reach with your kick by taking the bottom of your foot and slap. There, if you heard that, that was my toes hitting the target. I usually try to aim, that time was more correct, I try to aim more with the ball foot just to give a little slap, but that's just all there is to it here, okay? One other way that sometimes I will practice, actually there's two other ways that I practice with heel kicks. One, especially the defensive kick, I take it and I bring it up with a straight leg and bring it back. You've got to be able to control this though, but it is a great way to score. A lot of times you can surprise someone, especially if they're attacking you. You just simply lean back a little, put that heel right up to the target. But remember for karate competition, I can't go through their head. I gotta just touch the head. So you hit the head and then you pull the leg back the same direction it went. Just like that. So I'm just here. And even if you step with it, you can do that. And hit with the heel. The last way that sometimes I hit, and I consider it still a hook heel kick. Some people call it a different type of kick, but it basically it's where you hit with the bottom of your foot doing that same motion. It's a little easier not to hit somebody too hard, especially when you're doing it offensively. And you're just here coming in and tap. See how I just take that bottom of the foot and I just slap with it. All right, now the problem here is though, you notice it's really, really awkward to try to be facing my opponent after this kick. So you gotta be really careful with this because my back is pretty exposed with this. But I used to like to come in and hit some people like that. One of the things you need to train, like I talked about in the kicking video, is to kick and be able to pull the knee backwards so that you can move straight in and still hit them with a punch, okay? So don't forget to do that kind of training. Those are some just quick little notes about the hook heel kick to help you be able to add that more to your sparring. I'll see you in the dojo. I really miss all of you.